what day? 19th? Yeah, sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. This is great. We're going to be in good shape for you guys. Uh, all right? Um, <laughs> okay. Guys, we're going to continue talking about our quadratics that we've been working with today. And we're going to start looking at a new form, all right? So in 3.4, it's titled graphing f of x equals what we call, does this a value out front kind of look familiar to you guys? We've had an a out front all the time, haven't we? Okay. Difference is here is this. There's going to be an x minus h in parentheses squared and then a plus k out here. Now, guys, this plus k is kind of like a plus c in the end, all right? So what I'm going to tell you today is this. When we start graphing this form, a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k, there's a name for this form. And this name is called, ooh, let me change that. This name is called vertex form. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. That's called vertex form right there. And um, with vertex form today, kids, we need to really pay attention to your H value and your K value, all right? Guys, we've talked about vertical stretches and vertical shrinks in here, right? We've talked about flipping the graph. And we've talked about translating the graph up or translating the graph down. The one direction we haven't really moved stuff yet is left or right. And this part right here, I'm just going to let you know before we even start, this x minus h part right here, that's going to affect moving parent functions either left or right today. And we'll see that when we graph some things in decimals, all right? So the question becomes, how can you describe the graph of f of x equals a times x minus h squared and then plus k on the end? You guys, I think, will do really well with this, all right? To answer that question, the first thing we need to do is, I don't really know why they put this in here today, but we'll discuss it a little bit. Identify odd and even functions. I'll show you what that means. We're going to graph some quadratic functions of the form uh, a times x minus h squared. Same as a times x minus h squared plus k. We're going to graph some of those, and then we're going to model a few real-life problems. But kids, let's get rolling here first. Vocab-wise today, odd function, even function. All right, guys, an odd function is a function y equals what? They say it's odd if f of negative x is equal to what? negative f of x. We'll talk about odd and even functions down here in example one. One thing I want to tell you about an odd function is this. An odd function, I'm going to make a note right here. It is symmetric around the origin. So I'm just going to write the word origin. It's symmetric around the origin. And what this means is this. Okay, it's symmetric about the origin. If I had a coordinate plane right here, you graph this, this is what you would see. Kind of like this. I'm just going to draw a line that passes through the origin like this. And it goes up there like this. This is not a very good sketch. I'm going to do better. Guys, if I made half a turn at the origin right there, if I would take this and make half a turn at the origin, so I say, here's my point right here, spin that graph half a turn, what would it look like? It would be the same graph, right? What's up here in the first quadrant would land in the third quadrant, and what's in the third quadrant would land back in the first quadrant. So what I'm telling you is this, it's symmetric about the origin. If you put a point, or if you put your finger on the origin, it's made that half a turn with that graph, it would look exactly the same. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, an even function, a function y equals f of x is even if f of negative x is equal to what, kids? f of x, okay? This, my friends, is symmetric about the y-axis. This one's a little easier. This is symmetric around the y-axis. 
So what that means, kids, is this. If I had a coordinate plane, like so. If I had a coordinate plane, like so. And if I drew a graph kind of like this. What's true about the left half and the right half, kids? Doesn't the y axis cut that in two equal parts? Okay, so an even function is going to be symmetric about what here, friends? The y axis. Okay? All right, so two things, and we'll talk about what the f of x stuff means here in a second in example one, but I'm not going to get real excited about this, all right? Okay, vertex form, this is the part that's really important. This is really what we're after learning today. A quadratic function of the form y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k, where, what's this say? h comma k is my what? So if I had a, a quadratic function, say, what, say I had this y equals 2 times x minus 6 squared plus 3. Okay, now guys, keep in mind right here, there's a minus h in here. It doesn't say plus h. So it's like x and then the opposite of h. In here you have a minus 6. So what's that really make the h value here? It says a minus, the minus signs match. So isn't h really equal to 6 here? What's k? So in this case right here, my vertex would be the point 6 comma 3. If I had something like this, maybe I had y equals, I don't know, 3 times x plus 2 squared minus 5. Ah, Kids, help me out. What would the vertex be now? Pretty close, but you got to kind of be opposite of this sign in here. So, yeah, this is like minus negative 2. When I add, isn't that like minus negative 2 here, kids? So inside of parentheses, you're kind of doing the opposite of what's in parentheses. In this case, my vertex would be negative 2 comma 5. And I'll show you this graphically here in a little bit about what this stuff does. Okay. So a couple of examples there. Okay, and then the last term we need to talk about is a reflection. Okay? Like a mirror. If I looked in the mirror, if I was looking in the mirror, who's my reflection right now? You. Okay, it would be me, right? Okay? You'd see me. Now, most mirrors want to break when I get in front of them. You know why, right? Stunning good looks. I think it's the receiving hairline, it doesn't. At least I have here at this age, right? Okay. Yeah, you guys all know what a reflection is. It's a transformation that flips a graph over a line of reflection. So we should be pretty good with that, I think. All right? You've talked about reflections a lot. All right, I'm not going to get too excited about this right here, but example one says determine if a function is even or odd. What's the first function that's given there? 3x, right? I'm going to look at these graphically first, and then I'm going to do the notational stuff that comes with making this an even or odd function, okay? So here's the deal, kids. Let me jump into decimals real quickly. Okay, what was the first function, kids? 3x, f of x equals 3x. Projector mode on this. There's my graph right there. Okay. First things first. Does that look it might be symmetric about the origin, symmetric about the y-axis, or neither? Looks like it might be symmetric around the origin. Kids, if I made half a turn with this right here, if I made a half turn at the origin right here, well, first of all, it has to pass through the origin, doesn't it? Okay, if I made a half a turn right here, kids, would this be the same graph? Mm -hmm. So we think that this is what type of a function? Odd, even, or neither? We think it's odd. Okay, so graphically, we think it's odd. Okay, look at your, go up into your vocabulary, kids. Let's just pick on odd first, okay? What's it say about a function if something is odd? It 
said f of negative x would have to equal what? <coughs> equal negative f of x, right? Okay, so what this is saying is, is this. It's like saying, okay, in the function you have right now, replace x with what? It's basically saying input what variable for x up here. If I said, what's f of 2, you would plug 2 in for x. But what am I plugging in for x based on this? Negative x. So f of negative x, kids, would be equal to 3 times negative x. What's that equal in the end, kids? What's 3 times negative x? What's a positive times a negative going to be? What's a positive times a negative going to be? Negative 3x, right? That's what I end up with. Okay. Now, a negative f of x right here, kids, says the following. A negative f of x says, just take your whole function and change the, when I say a negative f of x, like this one down here, this is like saying, just change the sign of the original function. So originally it was positive 3x, right? Well, if I change the sign of a positive 3x, what do I get? Okay, this is just equal to negative 3x. And if you notice right here and here, what do I get in the end for both of those? Negative three x, are they equal? Okay, so by definition, this would be considered an odd function because f of negative x is equal to what? Negative f of x. So this is definitely an odd function. Okay, now I'm gonna jump ahead here and I'm gonna tell you that the second one actually is an even function. And I'll tell you why. In order to be even, what's it have to be symmetric about? So let's just talk about this one right here, okay? Look at your vocabulary again. This is an example of an even function, and I'll show you why. But by definition for an even function, I think it says f of negative x has to equal what, kids? f of x. So guys, when this negative x is in parentheses like this right here, we need to plug negative x in up here. So f of negative x would equal the following. This would equal 2. What am I replacing the x with, kids? Ah! Replacing x with negative x in this notation. So this becomes 2 times negative x all to the second power. Minus 6. Oh, help me out, kids. This part right here is negative x times negative x, isn't it? Well, what the heck's a negative times a negative again? Isn't that positive x squared again? Isn't that positive x squared times 2 right here? Isn't this equal to 2x squared minus 6 then, kids? So f of negative x equals what value again? 2x minus 6. Okay. Uh, oh, hey. Uh, well, I should have used g up here, but that's okay. I'll just change this to an f up here. Um, what was f of x equal to originally? So when you plug a negative x in here and get exactly the same thing out, these two functions are considered what? Or this function is considered even. Okay. If I plug negative x in and get the same exact thing out, this is considered to be even. All right. So I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to get too fired up about these right here. I think these are two good examples right here. We know that this is going to be even. Let's just double check this. Function is 2x squared minus 6, isn't it? Does the y-axis cut that thing in half, kids? Has to be what then? Even. Okay. Now, kids, take a look at the third function. What's that say? 3x to the second, is that right? Tell me more. Minus 2x? Uh, let's see. Is that symmetric about the origin? Could I make half a turn and make the graph look exactly the same? No, so it can't be odd. Is the y-axis going right through the very middle of it? Is it even? This is a situation where it would be what? Neither e even or odd. So just write neither there. Okay, and then the part down in the box below, you can say we looked at decimals to see this, all right? Again, I'm not going to get too fired up about even and odd stuff right here. If you want to look at them graphically, feel free to. It's odd if it's symmetric about what, kids? 
origin, even if it's symmetric about the y-axis, and it's neither if none of those conditions exist there. Okay. All right. So this one here, what did we say, kiddos? This is an example that is neither. Okay. Let's probably make that a little bit bigger font. Neither. Neither. Okay. All right, let's roll. Example two. Is that where we're at, kiddos? Ooh, I like this one. I love this stuff. This is where things get kind of exciting. You know why I like this stuff? Because it starts with an E. <coughs> And it rhymes with squeezy. Pretty easy, isn't it? Okay. All right. Let's make the uh, adjustment here. We're going to talk about graphing y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared. Okay. I just want to go into um, decimals here real quickly. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about this. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and say let's type in y equals. I'm going to go x plus an h here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Here's the deal, kids. I'm going to put this right here. What's your h value right there? Zero. Okay. Guys, I have x plus h squared right here. Now, if this would be like x plus 10, I'm going to, I'm going to move this h up to the, so it's x plus 5. Now, guys, when this is like x plus 5 squared right here, notice what direction the parabola moves. You ready? As I make h values higher and higher and higher positively, what direction is this actually moving? Okay, so when I add values inside of parentheses right here, kids, you would think, well, since you're adding a 5, you would think it would move right 5, but the opposite happens here, okay? The opposite happens here. How about this when I make 5 a negative? I'll go back to the vertex being right there at 0, 0. Guys, when I say let's make h a negative number, you would think, well, it should move to the left, but it actually moves what direction? Right. To the right, doesn't it? Okay, so in this situation right here, I kind of want to just maybe make a note up top. I think this would help, okay? Um, in this situation right here, if you have an x plus an h in parentheses squared like this, this is going to take the original parent function, x squared, and it's going to move stuff to the left h units, okay? But if it's x minus something like this, kids, what direction is it going to move? There you go. So maybe have that down there, jot it down. So guys, our job today is this. Again, I would tell you, when we start looking at uh, some of the characteristics of these graphs, especially in vertex form today, try to complete the problem. And then once you have a pretty good sketch of that or an idea of what that parabola looks like, maybe use decimals to verify your, your solution. But example two says, I want you to graph y equals a times x minus h squared. Okay, so our job right here, graph g of x is equal to one half. What's that one half out front do again? It's like an a value out front. Vertical shrink, good kids. Times the quantity x plus two squared. So I've got this x plus two in parentheses squared. Compare the graph to f of x equals x squared. Well, the first thing we would need to do, kids, is find the vertex, okay? And our function right here, kids, is 1 half x plus 2 squared. Now, guys, there's no plus k on the end here, so isn't it just like adding 0 to the end here? Would you agree with that? Okay. Let's look at the parentheses part first. Now we know that from x squared right here, we know the vertex on the most basic parent function of a quadratic is at zero, zero. That vertex is at zero, zero. 
Guys, when I have in parentheses an x plus 2 like this, what direction is that vertex moving? Left, how many units? Two units. And then this plus 0 on the end is like your up and down movement. So kids, my question becomes this. The vertex basically moves what direction then? Left two units and then up or down <coughs> zero. So where's that vertex going to land at, kids? Your vertex is going to land at negative two comma zero. Okay. Now, here's what I want you to do with this right here, to graph this right here. Go graph your vertex right down here. So here's negative two comma zero. You guys okay with the vertex being right there? Okay, see this table I've made right here? Go to the middle part right there and put negative two, zero in there. Right in the very middle. Okay, because this isn't the vertex right in the middle of the parabola. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. For input values, we're gonna change these input values. We're gonna say, all right, let's go over to the right of negative two. So right of negative two would be negative one and what else? zero, right? What would be left of negative two? And what else? So we have this function again, y equals one half times x plus two squared. We want to find some points to graph here. So let's do that. Guys, let's plug negative 4 in here. What's negative 4 plus 2? Negative 2 squared for me now, kids. 4, half of 4 in the end would be what? So when I input negative 4, what's the output? Okay, let's plug negative 3 in. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And then the negative 1 squared here by order of operations would be 1. Half of 1 would be what? Okay, now guys, if the vertex is right in the middle, what are these going to do to each other then if we know this is a parabola? Won't these mirror each other right here? So for instance, going one block to the left of zero, you have one half, so what should this value be right here? One half, and then at the very end you should be at what? Two. Let's just double check. Let's put zero in just to make sure we're sure. What's zero plus two? It's two squared. Four. Half of four. Oh, it worked. Let's plot our points. So the next point I'm going to go over here and plot is negative 4 comma what? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go left 4 and up how much, kids? Okay. What's the next point I should plot? So left 3 and up half. We've already got the vertex at negative 2, 0 plotted. What's next, kids? Left one and up how much? Well, that looks pretty good because those two points should mirror each other at the line of symmetry, right? And what's my last point, kids? Zero two. Looks like a little mouse with a pink nose, doesn't it? The eyes and the ears and the pink nose. You see it? Who knew that math could be so artistic? Okay, I'll stop with the joke. Must be too early in the morning, eh? All right, so yeah, your graph right here, kids, will look just like this, okay? Oh my gosh, I don't know how I can draw this very good. What's the name of the mouse that's like a person in some movies? Is that, uh, what am I thinking of? Um, is it Stuart Little? Is that what I'm thinking of? Yeah. Or yeah. Ratatouille. Ratatouille? Yes, that's a good movie. Actually. He's a rat, not a rat. He is a rat, but that's good stuff. Okay? Guys, just want to kind of back up here real quickly. Um, so, guys, really, the first thing you're going to find is what? Is the vertex, and listen to what I say, the vertex in vertex form, pretty easy to find, isn't it? Let me just write this down over here. You guys tell me real quickly. If this was a function, y equals. 6 times x minus 3 squared minus 7. Where's the vertex, kids? Where at? 3, comma. Yep. 
And then you would build around that point to start plugging points in around three. So you go a couple units right at three, a couple units left. Of three. So I think we've got this. Um, this is kind of your map or your guide for graphing things in vertex form here. All right. How do you guys feel about that? Pretty okay? Again, a little different than standard form. Standard form is a little more work, isn't it? To find the vertex. Okay. All right. Well, let's, let's motor on. Uh, what's on down here? Any questions so far, I guess? Just want to make some quick notes about this then, kids. Um, the A value in this right here, in this kind of a form, what it does, it's either going to be a vertical shrink or what else? Vertical <coughs> stretch. Okay. And I think we've been conditioned to understand how that works. So you have vertical stretch when A is bigger than what value? One. And then it's going to be uh, a vertical shrink if A is between zero and one, or like a fraction between zero and one. Okay. When does this flip over? When A is negative. So if A if A is negative, if A is, well, I'll just write this. If A is positive, we get a U shape. If A is negative, you're going to get an arch again. So keep that in mind. All right. Then the X minus H, kids, if you have X minus H in parentheses like this, you're shifting to the... You would think left because there's a minus sign in there, but it's actually what direction, kids? Right. To the right. And if you add an x plus an h right here, then what? Yeah. Yeah. And then the k value, kids, the k value, if you have a plus k on the end, you're moving up. And if you have a minus k, in what direction are you moving? Down. Okay. Well, that's a pretty good little cheat sheet for, for talking about transformations of your parent function x squared to form something in vertex form. So I think I want to take a look here in a second. Did I screw something up? Oh, uh, where should it? Oh, I see it. Up right here. Sam pointed it out to me again. This should be x plus h. All right, thanks for the catch, guys. Good job. Do I have it right now? You guys double check and make sure you made that same change there. All right, well, let's move on. Ooh, didn't we do this one already? Oh, no, did I screw up? Hang on a second. What you did, you did you I did. I, I know exactly what I did. I forgot to change the function in there. I've got to get the right function. So we're just going to change the function we're working with here. So give me one second. Sorry about that. Oh my gosh, they're going to fire me. I think I'm right. It's been nice knowing you guys. This is what it should have been, kids. I'm so sorry. Change this function up here. Changes to, okay, it should be y equals negative 3 times x. Yeah, let's do this. Let's go x plus 2 squared. Um, I think it's plus 2 again. Yep. That's what I should have had there. Okay? So here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to go ahead and look at this function right here. I want you to find the vertex. Now, kids, I'm going to highlight this box right here. Guys, when you figure out the vertex, put it in which part of your boxes? Middle, because the vertex is the kind of the point of symmetry for that, or the line of symmetry will pass for that. Okay, find your vertex. Get your vertex listed here. Put some input values left and right of that value to find your outputs. See if you can come up with a decent sketch here, okay? I'll give you a couple of minutes to try that or bounce ideas off of each other.
Now guys, all your points may not fit on this graph. I'm just going to be honest about that. Who's got a vertex for me already? Yeah, it's kind of the opposite of what's in parentheses here and then the K value algebra. So the vertex is where again, kids? Negative two comma. Two. Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna put negative two comma two right here. All right, friends, so what values did you put to the left of negative two? And then how about to the right of negative two? Okay, so I'm going to plot this, uh, let's see, left two, um, was it left two, up two, is that right, guys? Is that where my vertex is? Now, kids, one thing that might help you is this, and we didn't do this in the last one, but maybe if we make this little change, it might be to your advantage, if you want, uh, to put maybe your line of symmetry in here, okay? And I'll show you why here in a second. I'm going to be honest with you. You only have to, how many empty spots do I have in the chart here? But if I can find just two of them, won't they mirror each other? So I'm going to pick the ones that mirror here. I'm going to go two to the right. So let's put negative one in, kids. What's negative one plus two? I'm going to put the negative one here. What's negative one plus two? One squared is still one times the negative three plus two more. So when I input negative one, what's my output? So this would be negative one, okay? So maybe I go to the left one and down one and plot that point, but kids, when I have a mirror right here, by the way, is this gonna make an arch shape or a U shape? Arch. arch, somebody explain to me why you know that has to be right. Say it again, Allie. Your A value up front is negative, isn't it? Okay. All right, let's plug zero in. What's zero squared, kids? Or, I'm sorry, what's zero plus two? Two squared? Four times negative three? Negative 12 plus two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that going to fit the graph? No. That's okay, isn't it? Don't I have at least something here? It would be clear down here somewhere, wouldn't it? Okay, so a decent sketch would look kind of like this. How many had that? How many had the vertex first of all? That's my first question. How many at least had these two points? Okay, as long as you're able to do that, okay? My real concern is can you identify the vertex right now in this form? Is that pretty okay right now with everybody? Okay, my other concern is can you make sure you put the vertex in the middle and then build some points around your vertex to get a decent sketch? All right, that's about all we're doing today. So um, let's move. Talking about transforming parabolas. I think you're going to knock this out of the park. It says consider your function up here in, in example three. So what was our function again, kids? Negative 3x squared. What was it? Negative 3 times... Was it x plus 2 squared, kids? Okay, it says consider the function up there in example three, which was that right there. It says, I'm not even going to tell you the graph. I just want you to write the function. Okay, guys, this is saying rewrite this function so that g of x is x minus four. This is basically saying take this x value right here, kids. Take this x value and replace it with what? X minus four. So g of x, my friends, would become the following. This would become... And by the way, if I have an x minus 4 in here, what's that minus 4 really doing? In parentheses, if you have x minus 4 like this, what direction is this moving, right or left? It's basically taking this graph and moving it to the right, how many units? Four units. Let's see if that's true. This would become the following. It would become at negative 3. Okay, we're really replacing the x with what here, kids? And inside of parentheses, there's still a what? Still what else in parentheses here in this original function? Okay, 
Okay, so if I want to take this original function right here and create a new one that's g of x minus 4, all you do is replace cx with x minus 4 and see what you get out. Inside of parentheses, are there any terms you could combine here? Yeah, so this is really going to be negative 3 times, help me with my north of highway 3 mass skills, x minus 2 now. There it is. Okay. There it is. Now let me just show you something here quickly. The original function was Here's the original function, right kids? What did we come up with for a new one? Ah, shoot. We came up with negative 3 times x minus 2 squared plus 2. Kids, take a look from vertex to vertex. Here's the original one. How far to the right did it move? Four units. Is that what we expected to have happen? Yep. Okay. Good. Well, let's knock this out of the park and finish this last example, I think. The last few examples, whatever we have left. Guys, if I go out to the water fountain out there and push the water fountain, the water comes up out of there to get a drink, comes up like this, and then does what? What shape is that for me? A parabola, right? Okay, this is pretty cool. It says water fountains are usually designed to give a specific visual effect. Now, for this example, I don't have a picture of it. We can look at it in the book. But water fountains are going to consist of streams of water that are shaped like what? Okay, we could go right outside in the hallway and see that. It says notice how the streams are designed to land on the underwater spotlights. We'll worry about that later. Okay. What we're asked to do here, kids, is write and graph a quadratic function that models the path of water with a maximum height of what, kids? Four feet represented by a vertex where? Three comma what? Okay, and then it says it lands on a spotlight six feet from the water jet represented by what point? Okay, we need to write a function for this. Now, what form are we talking about today? We know we're in vertex form, right? Okay, here's what ends up happening. Vertex form is the following. Okay, to write a function in vertex form, we need to accomplish the following things. All right, first of all, do we know where the vertex is? Where is the vertex? Three comma four right here, right? We know the vertex is at three comma four. We also know that it passes through which point? Six comma zero, okay? Guys, which two variables in our function represent your vertex? In this standard form, I'm sorry, this vertex form up here, which variables represent my vertex? Okay. Three and four do, so it's going to go in for H and K. Kids, I'm going to tell you right now, when you're writing functions in vertex form, you have to find a number for A, a number for H, and a number for K. So when you do something like this, kids, your job number one, plug in your vertex. What is the vertex again? Three comma four. So this becomes the following. It becomes Y equals some value A times X minus how much? Three. All to the second plus four. four. Okay, so we have established H and K because H and K represent my vertex. So now we've got to find a value for what? A. All right. So I'm going to write H and K by this vertex right here. Now, kids, on this path right here, I know it goes through the vertex three comma four, but we know that the water lands at a spot which is where. 6 comma 0, which states that when x is 6, then y is what value? 
Okay, we're going to use that point to plug in for x and y, and that's going to help us solve for what last variable do we need to find? We need to find an a, so let's do that. So, okay, we know we passed through 6, comma, 0. So if what you have up here after you plug in the vertex, now plug in your x and y. So given this point, what is the y value? We're going to plug 0 in for y. That's going to make a times... Kids, when y is 0, what do I have to plug in for x given this point? Ooh, we have some number crunching to do. Oh, 6 minus 3. 3 squared. Isn't this like 9 times a right here now? Can I see the 9a right here? Okay. 9a. Plus how much? Has to equal what value? Zero. Do I have enough information to solve for a now? Yeah. What's your first step? Subtract four. four, right? Uh, 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 won't a equal negative four over nine here? You guys agree with that? Can I ask a question? If water's here, see where my finger is here? If water's here, comes out of the fountain like this, it comes back down and lands, does it make sense if A is a negative number? Yeah. Okay, so my final function becomes the following. We had to find values for A, H, and K. My final function is going to be Y equals what, kids? What's going in for A? Negative 4 over 9. Times X minus what, kids? All to the second. second power. This would be the path of that water modeled by the given situation. Okay, and We're going to talk more about this tomorrow. Uh, I will tell you, I sent out an online page today. I think it's like, I don't know how many problems I sent out. Did anybody look at it yet? Get into big ideas. Take a look at this. See what's uh, up with that, and uh, we'll go from there with it, okay? You guys are great. Keep up the good work. Um, come with questions tomorrow, okay?